Greetings to everybody. Uh, I'm coming to you in the name of Jesus today and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I'm Deacon Teddy O'Connor and I'm delighted to be given this opportunity to share a few moments of reflection and prayer with you in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. And I thank those responsible in Shalom uh, TV for enabling us and providing us with the technology to unite with each other under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. As I say, my name is Deacon Teddy O'Connor, and uh, it's a comfort ministry that uh, Shalom has developed, and I'm delighted to be part of that. Uh, and I know that we are uh, talking to uh, prisoners uh, today through this ministry. So your position and your, your place as prisoners, we want to connect with you. Uh, I haven't been in a cell myself, but I had a very serious illness. Uh, about 12 months ago, I was discharged from hospital and I had been in hospital for three and a half months recovering from COVID. I was on life support uh, for two months and I had extraordinary experiences and I learned an awful lot from it. So I have learned what it is to be confined, what it is to be, if you like, imprisoned uh, with my freedom uh, limited. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't walk, I couldn't move my hands. Uh, so my body was totally, uh, had totally collapsed. So it gives me an idea because within that, I discovered that when I was off the life support and when I was breathing and when I was conscious again, that I actually could have a life. I actually developed a very uh, deep relationship uh, with the person of Jesus Christ. And that is what I would like to introduce you to today, uh, a personal relationship with the person of Jesus Christ, because Jesus knows exactly where you are, and Jesus wants to assist you in every way, as he did with me when he helped me through uh, my life support and when he helped me through my sickness, and I'm still uh, recovering. In a sense, I'm still recovering. So wherever, whatever you're imprisoned with, the greatest imprisonment is the imprisonment of our mind. So it's freeing our mind uh, for goodness and for the beauty of God and for the unity that's around us to reunite and to stay united with the people around us and with the goodness of God. So uh, we'll go through a little bit of that today. So it depends on how we're feeling today. You may be feeling down. You may be suffering in some way. You may, you may feel totally miserable. You may feel that you have sinned and all of that and that you are being punished uh, for sin. And I can tell you that that is not true. God doesn't punish anybody because he is, his being is filled with love. And the only thing God can do is love. And the only thing God cannot do is not love you. He, so the thing is that we need to be truthful uh, with Jesus. So we can speak to him in a truthful way. So if we're feeling bad today, if we're feeling miserable, if we're feeling down, if we're feeling guilty maybe about something, if we're indeed, if we're filled with joy uh, for some reason, then we bring that to Jesus. If we're feeling full of joy, we praise him. Uh, and so we bring him our pain because that is truth. 
when we connect with the misery within us and bring it to Jesus, we're connecting with the truth within ourselves. And that is awesome when it comes to relationship. Even our earthly relationships, if we can come with truth, then that's a deep relationship. So all relationships actually are placed on our relationship with God. So we go to Jesus, we seek God through Jesus, and we bring him everything in our conversation. So wherever you are, just relax and sit down and just communicate in a very relaxed way with God. I have a candle here lighting beside me. I always light a candle when I enter into this spiritual communication because the candle brings light and the darkness has never put out the light. So whatever darkness you are in today, just see and connect with that light. Connect with the light within yourself. Connect with the light on the screen. If you don't have a candle, connect with the light on the screen. Connect with the candles around the Eucharist and bring that light within you. Bring that light within you now. Give yourself time. That is a spiritual light. It's a sacred light. It's a light that will never go out. And that light will quench the darkness. If you're experiencing darkness in any form, bring that light within you. It is better to light one candle than curse the darkness. And contemplate on that. It is better to light one candle than curse the darkness. And I'm going to read a piece of scripture now for you. Uh, it's taken from St. Paul. St. Paul persecuted Jesus and he persecuted Christians, all Christians. He stoned Stephen to death, the first martyr. Saint Paul, whom he became afterwards, stoned Stephen to death. So he would be considered uh, an obstacle to the gospel. He would be considered a sinner. He entered into into that uh, divisive relationship where he became and stayed divided, di di divided from goodness, separated from goodness, separated from unity, which is love, separated from the power of the universe, which we call God. Then St. Paul, had a miraculous experience where he heard Jesus speaking to him and he asked him, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting my church? And Paul had a long spiritual experience and he emerged from that a new man. So that is the possibility that Jesus holds out to each one of us to become new men and women with a relationship with him. So I read for you now uh, St. Paul's, just a few verses from St. Paul to the Corinthians. It's actually 2 Corinthians 3, 4 to six i also pick up on verses 16 and 18. 
such confidence. This is Paul now. And if I can make one suggestion, that when you're listening to Scripture, <clears throat> it's Jesus speaking to you. I'm just being the voice of Jesus today. It's Jesus speaking to you. Such confidence we have through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter of the law kills, but the Spirit gives us life. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil of fear and darkness is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So that's what I was saying there to you earlier on, that when we contemplate the Lord, we are actually receiving his spirit. When we sit and contemplate his word, because his word is alive and living, his word is as relevant today as it ever was. So it's our task, my task, your task, to fill ourselves with God's word every day. Every day, a little piece, a few verses of God's word every day. And as we saw in the text, this brings us freedom. So wherever you are, this God's word will bring you freedom. And we have seen this over the through the ages, we saw it with Nelson Mandela in prison for 27 years. And he would say that it's his dignity gave him freedom. His dignity gave him his imagination. His dignity gave him creativity, which he got from the text, which he got from scripture because this is what scripture endeavors to give us. It's the good news and it teaches us about the dignity of God, but also the dignity that we have through our creator. Because my friends, we didn't create ourselves. It is the, the creator of the entire universe who created us out of love for a purpose. He created us out of love, and that never changes. No matter what we have been involved in, no matter what you have done, no matter where you have been, that initial creation that God desired in his heart for you, it still stands. Because this is what unconditional love is. We are all called to this love, but it's very, very difficult. It's very, very hard. The only way I maintain myself through my own experience of life is through keeping in touch with the scriptures, keeping in touch with prayer. I knew a priest one time I studied his work and he went through the concentration camps and he observed that it was only those who had this spiritual thread within them that actually survived the concentration camps. But he did say that those who were connected spiritually, who had opened themselves up 
to the message of God, to God's word. They were the people who survived the concentration camps. Uh, so when he got through it and when he got away with it, when he got out, when he was released, <clears throat> he developed a complete body of work that involved spiritual formation. He called it formative spirituality. Father Adrian Van Camp. He has a complete body of work. It's available on the net. They're promoting it. These people are in Pittsburgh. It's an academy in Pittsburgh. And they're still distributing and proclaiming his word through their ministry. So that is a, a fantastic testimony that that priest has given. I have his work here myself. As I say, I did summer schools on it with the academy in Pittsburgh. That when we are formed spiritually, it gives us a resilience. It also gives us freedom and it gives us fulfillment. We desire for nothing more. That's a very strong statement, and I'm really conscious of what I am saying. When we immerse ourselves in God's word, we desire for nothing more. When I came off the life support, that is what I did. I've been doing it since. I immerse myself in God's word and I discover that it's healing me and it's bringing me freedom. And then when I discussed it with a friend, he said, but your Teddy, doesn't it say that in scripture itself? It says it in Proverbs, Proverbs 2, 23. My child, immerse yourself in my word and you will have new life. So my friends, whether that is sickness, whether it's separation, whether it's guilt, whether it's grief, all those corrosive characteristics, when you immerse yourself in God's word, it heals it and you desire for nothing more. Then you will be at peace and you will rest. What I'd like to do now is take you through uh, a forgiveness prayer to prepare you to receive God's word. And the first thing we'll do is we'll go back to when you were a child, your earliest moments, and just think of when, when you were hurt or when somebody maybe sinned against you. Just go back to that place and tell them that you'll forgive them. Tell them that you'll forgive them. Take your time with this. Go through your life in five-year stages. <clears throat> and anybody that ever hurt you, say, I forgive you. If you're finding it difficult to forgive, put your hand in the hand of Jesus, spiritually. Jesus is stretching out his hands and his arms to us all the time. You may not be able to see them, but if you put out your hand, we have the capacity and the grace to feel the touch of Jesus. If you put out your hand in love and ask Jesus to be present to you and stay with that focus, you will feel the touch of Jesus. Ask Jesus to help you. Ask Jesus to help you to go back spiritually into that place where you were hurt. And say those words, 
I forgive you. You may have the person's name. Use their name. I forgive you. And then immerse yourself into the ocean of love that Jesus will put in front of you and say to that person one at a time, I am free from your heart. I am free. I am free from you and you are free from me. There is nothing between us now but a notion of God's love. My friends, when you do that, you will be a new person, a new woman, a new man. Take your time. Don't rush this. There's no need to rush it. Forgiveness is our bridge to happiness. Forgiveness is the way we open ourselves up to God. I mentioned at the beginning that I was, that I am a deacon. Somebody asked me recently, what is a deacon? We can make it very, very complicated. But I have put it very, very simply. A deacon is a person who listens, who listens to the people with pain, who listens to the people who are carrying hurt. And he introduces them to the person of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the ultimate healer. And because we know Jesus, we know that Jesus has healed us, then we can bring you along that journey of healing. We can bring you to the touch of Jesus. That is our calling, my friends. That is part of the reason we exist. That is why we were born, to listen to the people who are carrying heart and to introduce them to the person of Jesus. Introduce them to the person of Jesus Christ. So my friends, just make sure that you listen to this and that you first of all as I did, break free from the prison of your mind, from prison to praise. When you get a glimpse of Jesus, praise him. And then that is your journey from prison to praise. There's a book written on that, prison to praise, but that's the essence of the book. Stay praising God for everything in your life, because you will learn so much from your present position in life. Wherever you are, you will learn so much from your present challenge, your present challenges. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to open to God's blessings, the blessings of Jesus that is always there, that is always there. So again, take the candle of the light, take that light inside of you and see that Jesus has a stronger light and he wants to bless you more and more each day. He wants to shower you with graces, giving you freedom. He wants to shower your friends with you. So you may be guiding those near you. You may be guiding those even in your family outside at the moment. 
you have the capacity to do that. All you need to have is the desire to do it. Stay open to the blessings that Jesus has for you. He has an abundance of blessings for each one of us. I'm discovering it more and more each day. It's not by what I do, but it's what I hear through the Spirit. And you will hear exactly the same. When you open to the goodness and the grace of God, it's there. All you need to do is absorb it through the pores of your soul. Your soul is created for that. So let everything go of a corrosive nature. Give it to Jesus and continue your dialogue and your relationship with Jesus. I thank Shalom for giving us this opportunity again of connecting right across the world through their technology, through their powerful ministry. That is a light. They are a light in our world. May God bless you and we make the sign of the cross together. And that sign of the cross, my friends, is the sign of freedom because Jesus has walked this way before us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you. Prayer of St. Francis de Sales My God, I give you this day. I offer you now all of the good that I shall do. And I promise to accept, for love of 